So we are at the Marvin Clemmy Research Range out here in Bessie, Oklahoma, um, where I currently have some cattle on trial at. The research that I'm interested in right now and what we're doing out here is um, in the last few years, we've had this big increase in dairy beef calves entering the feedlot system, uh, but there's been a little, little work in their post weaning management. So right now out here, we have 150 head um, 75 of them are dairy beef crossbred steers and then 75 are just native straight beef cattle. The dairy industry has had a lot of uh, economic issues that have uh, pushed them to adopt some uh, different reproductive technologies so that they can get uh, full blood replacement heifers out of their very best cows. When we put these beef on dairy calves directly on feed at a very light body weight, uh, we're seeing uh, them be on feed for nearly a year, over 300 days, uh, which gives them a, a lot of time to have some different digestive problems. We're seeing uh, issues with liver abscesses. We are hoping that putting these cattle through a stalker phase on uh, forage-based diets uh, will shorten the time on feed and hopefully decrease some of those issues just because they won't be uh, in feed yards for uh, as long a period of time. They'll be bigger, they'll be more mature, uh, better able to handle the stresses that they uh, see through the production phase. Uh, so we, we feel you know, all the advantages of a stalker program in the beef industry uh, should apply to these beef on dairy crosses. We're seeing how they do on pasture and their gain, and then we're supplementing them with some DDG cubes, and uh, we'll be getting them off here in a couple weeks and seeing how they do. And then alongside of them, we also have some calves up in Buffalo, Oklahoma at Buffalo Feeders that we will eventually be able to compare the two together because those calves went straight two feet up in Buffalo where these guys have been grazing the lovely grass that's out here. Dairy genetics uh, within these uh, cattle gives us some advantages in carcass quality, but they are very light muscled. Uh, the beef uh, portion or the, the beef sires adds both uh, muscularity, uh, uh, increased performance, increased gain, and increased efficiency uh, to those dairy genetics. You know, we'll have a, a very good, high quality product, and that beef cross just increases the efficiency and, and performance of those animals. These dairy beef calves are um, performing about the same as the native beef calves, um, maybe just a little bit less. The beef calves are still going to outperform them in some aspects. Um, but what we've seen is that these dairy beef crosses are really complementing that beef side and letting that dairy side behind so that way they're doing better in the feedlot. I would say that they are pretty even and I think that we'll get some really cool data from these guys running them alongside. Um, I'll be interested once they go to slaughter their carcass data, but I think weight wise right now they're looking really great and really similar to each other. So it would be a better management practice for these dairy calves. They'd have a better quality of life, um, better carcass data at the end, uh, all of those things. And so it would also be a great opportunity for these stalker producers. And it's a great opportunity for dairy producers as well because they're able to take those lower genetic females that they have that they still want a new lactation on but don't want to keep the calf for replacement females. And they can get these dairy beef crosses that they then can sell to a calf ranch and the calf ranch can then take to stockers and stockers can then take them to feedlots instead of feeding them like your traditional dairy calf and not having as much use for them or as much value in them. We're getting, they'll have a lot more value at the end in these dairy beef crosses. Oh